Hello and good afternoon or good morning to well whoever watches. Um, welcome to another stream. Now I just want to make sure this all works now because I have got a new computer or basically I have uh, modified my computer, reinstalled Windows, uh, got a new prop, uh, CPU and all that stuff. So I just want to make sure this works properly. Uh, I can see myself there. That looks fine. Um, I guess the sound is coming out as well. So uh, because I can hear myself at the monitor. So cool. Um, let's kick it off. Uh, just check YouTube. That looks good. Okay, cool. Um, hello, uh, Janane. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, awesome. So happy to hear. Uh, again, everything is the same. I just have to reinstall Windows. And also you can see me. That's very good. I'm super happy that you can. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. Uh, I'm streaming this at a lower resolution than I wanted to. Uh, give me just one second. Ah, I have to restart my stream. Um, because 720p is not enough. Um, uh, let me restart my stream. Hello, Mr. Oh, it's Graham. So, uh, by the way, is the quality okay? So I should restart or should not restart my stream. I think it's, uh, it should be fine. I I'm not going to restart it because, uh, uh, having to do this again is not the best thing in the world, in the world. Um, so if, if this looks good, let me just have a, let's, let me throw, the, throw it back to the screen. Um, uh, this, I will zoom a bit more. Does this look fine? Um, does it look fine or should I, uh, should I restart the stream with a higher resolution? Looks good. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, then let me get back to my face. Um, Cool. So today, uh, the goal is basically to go through a bit of uh, Amazon CloudWatch. So kind of have a look at the basics of what is CloudWatch, kind of some of the elements of CloudWatch, and we're going to do something with CloudWatch logs and those kind of things. Um, now, mind you, CloudWatch is a massive service, right? There's no chance uh, we can cover all the things today. Uh, I'm going to just mention a few things, kind of show up, have a look at the console as well. And at the end of the day, what we're going to try to do is we're going we're to try to make uh, maybe a dashboard, uh, import some logs from a web server, get some metrics on there. So actually something you would do with an EC2 instance, for example. So um, let me flip to the screen now. That looks good. So, okay, this is my IAM. Let me go to CloudWatch. Okay. Also, I hope everybody's having a great start to this week as well. I am missing some lights um, compared to last time because I had to move my light. I had a big old light here. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of recordings for the upcoming uh, AWS uh, online summit. So the online summit is happening June 17th and I'm going to be delivering three sessions. So I had a, had a whole setup here for recording. It's actually have a big old white, white backdrop sitting out in the hallway as well. So, um, uh, I have to do a bunch of recording this week. So I had to, I had to rearrange my setup a bit again. Oh, hello, hello Edmund. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so, um, let me just have a look. All right. Um, so let's, let's talk about CloudWatch. Um, but before we continue to CloudWatch, because just to get this off the, off, the, off the point, CloudWatch is a monitoring service, right? But, with, but we, before we get into what exactly is CloudWatch uh, per se, why is monitoring important, right? So, and, and this, this, this boils down to a lot of discussions with people. Uh, oh, Graham asked, can you say what the sessions will be? So I'm delivering three sessions. One is live coding with CDK. So I'm going to be building a serverless application or something with CDK. Uh, the other session is a deep dive on infrastructure as code. So CloudFormation, CDK, a whole bunch of uh, very advanced topics regarding that. And the third session is, I named it uh, stay in control while moving fast. It's basically how can you uh, embrace tools such as CloudWatch, Control Tower, Systems Manager, CloudFormation, all the management tools of AWS to kind of help you organize your everything, the massive scale of the cloud and gives you the ability to move a bit faster. So those are going to be my sessions uh, uh, in the upcoming um, uh, virtual summit. So I uh, 
I hope we get a lot of people there. I, get, I hope to get to talk to a lot of folks as well. So, but yeah. Um, uh, and the live coding is well it's not live right i'm gonna record it but i'm gonna be there uh, uh, present during the during the stream so uh, oh thank you uh i i think i shared a link on um on twitter or linkedin or somewhere uh but actually let me just share a link here as well so if any anybody wants to um uh and if, if anybody wants to like um uh, register for this i'm sorry for for the shameless plugs but it's it should be something very fun yeah. um cool so uh, let me try to um, get back to my topic um monitoring right so uh, uh, monitoring is very important and there's a big reason why so why is monitoring important um and i come i come from a again i, I say this a lot of times i come from a traditional background and um we used to do uh, things more you know um uh, traditionally uh, we had a i had a i used to work in a company where we everything we used to run everything in the data center and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. um and monitoring was always something that we did reactively so it was a we had a big old uh display with uh you know links or, or green and red little boxes showing up is something healthy or not and that's good sometimes but it's not the sole purpose of monitoring so monitoring should also give you some other other things it, while it gives you the the ability to be reactive and see oh something's wrong with my web server or something's wrong with my database let me fix that uh, uh monitoring should also give you the uh, the uh, the the indication are you doing something right right so for example if you make a change to your application make a code change or make an infrastructure change you want to be sure that that change does not affect the way your product works right so, so you have this so we come to a discussion about metrics and, and you know baselines uh, by having a specific baseline let's say you have an application that serves a website right and um, the baseline for your baseline metric for your application working good is the response time of your website right it takes you know five milliseconds of response time to your for your site to be considered okay now any change you make can affect positively or negatively that metric right and if you're not monitoring for that metric if you're not really paying attention how do you know that you did good things right so um, and this is a discussion I had with a lot of AWS customers when I asked them about KPIs, right? Or, or baselines, m metric baselines. Do you know that you did something good, right? How do you, how do you justify time invested in, let's say, upgrading infrastructure if that cannot be seen on a metric you define? So monitoring for those metrics and having a look at those things such as, you know, trends, uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, dips and flows and you know understanding what external external elements are, are also impacting your your uh, uh, your performance metrics or your baselines should be very important as well so um, I, I'm gonna be doing an example here which is super simple it's you know we're gonna be looking at actual some you know CP utilization memory utilization all of those baseline metrics on CloudWatch but those are not the only metrics you should think of right so uh, metrics and monitoring should be a uh, over-encompassing thing and there's a whole um, whole discussion about metric metrics and monitoring and I'm actually thinking about bringing over a colleague here as well to talk with him talk with him to you guys about um, some more abstract topics of monitoring and understanding metrics and operational excellence you understand the uh, Amazon's well architected framework right so um, the operational excellence part of it is <laughs> very important and monitoring actually belongs into the operational excellence so you have to be aware what's happening how it's happening where it's happening etc etc so um this is where you know it comes back to cloudwatch uh, or a monitoring software so i'm going to be mentioning cloudwatch but this applies to basically any monitoring software you use um you have to have this feedback loop right so it's not just reactive so you make a change you have to see how what kind of a change that change has made and then based off of that, you either roll back, pat yourself on the back, get a beer, or work harder to improve what you did. So it's also, it, it's, it's a, it's an excellent way of understanding the health or the, let's say the effect your change has happened. So 
I, I, I like this I like this quote about when do most mistakes happen in a production environment? When a change occurs, right? So when you make a change, you want to make sure that there are no, makes, no mistakes happen. So everybody has a monitoring system in place. So whether you know it or not, your customers are your monitors, right? Are your alarms. But you do not ever want to trigger an alarm or a monitoring from your customer, right? So if you have an application that serves a whole bunch of people and then you make a change and something goes really bad <laughs> and your customers come back to you saying, hey, but your site doesn't work. Uh, that's a very bad way to get monitoring or uh, get notified about something, but it is a way, right? It's, it's a way to do it as well. But that's why we want to have a look at CloudWatch or a tool that can help us do a bit more with monitoring. So um, what is CloudWatch? And CloudWatch is this over encompassing service that includes a bunch of different services within. Um, and I'm gonna cover a few of them. Absolutely not gonna be able to cover all of them because there's so much of things in CloudWatch, but um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a tool that actually monitors your AWS resources and the applications that run within your AWS account. So, and it does it in real time. So in essence, think of it as a, um, as, a, as a service that collects, tracks, and stores metrics, such as CP utilization, uh, network utilization, storage, logs, whatever. It, it gives you the ability to gain this um, system-wide visibility, right? So this is not something you need, you need to CloudWatch, absolutely not, but it's something that just exists, right? CloudWatch does that, right? So um, it can collect metrics from a whole bunch of services, right? So if, if I have a look here, right? So if I have a look at metrics, um, and you can see there's a whole lot of things here happening. You have, um, if I can scroll this, yes, sorry. Uh, you have things, you know, you can get um, from DynamoDBs, from API gateways, from um, from elastic block store volumes, from EFS, EC2, uh, gateways, RDS, uh, run commands, uh, workspaces, uh, all of these kinds of metrics are collected uh, within CloudWatch. And then you do something with them, right? And what do you do? Basically, you kind of, um, you make statistics, you make visualizations, you make graphs, you do something, make alarms. So these metrics exist, but this is also like, these are, you know, this is Schrodinger's metrics. Unless you're actually doing something with it, they're not useful, right? So it's it's both useful and not useful at the same time, is you really need to find um, a, 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 well, a proper uh, uh, use for them as well, right? So if I go to like EC2 metrics and uh, open up like some, some instance measurement, let me get my face here. Um, you can see there's a, like a network in metric as well for a certain instance uh, or CP utilization, which is kind of the mostly, um, mostly, you, mostly common one, right? So you see CP utilization. But again, unless you have some concrete thing to do with this, or unless you find some action out of this, it's kind of useless, right? So. CloudWatch gives you the ability to actually make some things out of it, right? You can, um, uh, like, for example, gather statics, statistics for a metric or, or something like that, right? So let me actually just open up something here. I want to paste this like that. So, um, uh, oh, Sircon says Athena has some new metrics. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So as services expand, uh, we get more and more metrics available for each of the services. And if you have a look at, um, how can you do Amazon CloudWatch metrics services? So there is a really nice, um, actually, I think I missed it here. Amazon, Amazon CloudWatch. Yes, so there's uh, there's a list of AWS services that publish metrics. So all of these services right now um, are publishing metrics, right? So, um, you know, um, not all of them support it, absolutely, right? So there are some services and features that do not support a native CloudWatch metrics, but all of these services you see on this list uh, support uh, um, support this uh support the uh, support pushing cloud metrics uh graham says can you post the link in the chat please absolutely let me just find the quickest way to do it uh give me a second twitch 
I, uh, I'm, I'm running this on two separate computers. So my, my, my desktop is, is the one that's actually doing the streaming and my laptop is where I'm showing you, right? So, um, but let me do this and copy like that. Go to the chat room and paste it. There you go. So if you want to have a look at which which of the which um, which platforms or which services publish Cloud Watch metrics, these are these are the ones. Now, again, because of the scale of Cloud Watch and the many services it supports, I cannot by any means go over uh, over these things. But um, for example, let let let's try to just make a statistic, right? Because you kind of do statistics here, and then based on those statistics, you do something, right? So let's let's try to um, make uh, a statistic for, for example, CPU utilization, right? So find per instance metrics, and then I will go um, CPU right like that. Okay, cool. I will select an instance, um, <laughs> let's say this one, it's a Windows node, there's something happening on it, uh, is it something happening on this one, I mean they're pretty much all um, not doing anything, but let's see this one has a, a small, small, small spike here, right? Um, okay, so I will select this and I'll go here, let me again move my face so you can see it here. and. Now, the goal behind this is, is let's try to um, make a, a, a custom percentile, get like an average statistic here for a custom percentile. So, um, statistic, the average one, but if I do like P95, so this actually gives me um, the, the percentile value of, of this utilization, right? So, it's it's not something that it, it's and this is very important when you do metrics understand your percentiles and i believe i do i talk about this enough i talk about this in some other talk i delivered as well but uh the difference between uh p95 and the average can be massive right so basically this is this is these are, this is the average sleep utilization in 95 percent of the cases right um 95 percent and below are in this so you know having having a, a, a some like if you do p99 uh, it might be something lower now in this graph it's it's not very visible but um i had a really great graph on this for example there was this um massive graph which had a huge spike in something right there was a huge spike in the api call utilization and 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 this spike presented one time it happened right one problem one uh, latency or something like that but that doesn't give you the entire picture because it just happened once and your graph might be skewed if you just use the average, right? Or if you use the max or something like that. But if you use proper statistics, understanding your P90s and P95s and P99s, you can get a get a better better um, better picture of this. I, I wish I had that um, thing right here to show you here. Maybe maybe I can have it here. I had it in one of the. I had it in one of my um, one of my slides. Uh, I'm actually I want to show you because it's very important. It's nothing to do with CloudWatch per se, but it's 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 monitoring. It's very important when we talk about monitoring. So, Slidex, um, I delivered that this year at the Dev Conference. This one. So, where are my graphs? So, so this is my talk on, on, on taking serverless to the next level. It's actually, it's a talk made by, uh, by Daniel, my colleague, Daniel Opocia, but it's, it's very important to understand what, what are different, uh, percentiles here, right? So, um, if you have a look here, the P100 percentile is your maximum, right? If you would look at your P like, this is a, this is a graph for auto scaling groups in AWS, right, from, from for our auto-scaling backplate, if we would look at the P100 graph, uh, we would say that, oh my God, it's the latency is 24 seconds. This is horrible, right? But that's why you have to understand your P99s, P90s, and P50s, right? So um, this is where, um, for example, your, you know, P50 is basically the average, right? This is the 
fifty uh, percent, the or, or actually not the average, it's the median uh, uh, of your uh, latencies in this case, right? So it's very understand. It's very important that you understand these things. And when you use something like this within CloudWatch, it's very important that you do so that you make a proper graph. So this gives you the ability, again, you get raw information, raw data here, and then uh, based off, you know, you can do a maximum, right? You can have, this, again, this graph is not very useful, but um, for example, the 10 percentile, right? So you can see that this was the 10 percentile. In this case, it was like oh, well, next to nothing, right? So uh, it's very important to understand these things. So sum is not potentially useful here. Um, um, minimum again minimum gets you the minimum value at that point of time uh you can do a lot more with this than just 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 using like that so again understand your percentiles is very important oh there's a follow button well um, i wish i had a mod here um can i remove this chat as well somehow um can i do somehow Wait, uh, awesome. <laughs> I don't want people spamming, but I guess it happens. Um, so that's these are metrics, right? So metrics are basically just a lot of information being dumped into a bucket or a central location that you can do something with, right? And again, those those range from CPU utilization, disk utilization, networking, slow queries on database, and a whole lot of things which we cannot uh, all visit today. But yeah. Now, next thing is next to uh, metrics is something called an alarm or alarms now cloudwatch alarms are basically as the name says it gives you the ability to trigger an alarm or raise an event raise a flag something if something happens now there's two types of al alarms uh, there's a metric alarm and there's a composite alarm so a metric alarm is uh, I think I have, I think all of these things are kind of metric alarms here. I think I may have, for example, this is a metric alarm. Uh, this alarm s says, uh, basically it takes a raw metric such as CPU utilization. In this case, it's for some ECS cluster I used to have, uh, or still have, I don't know. It was from 2017. There we go. Um, so it, 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 in case like, well, let's, let's have a look at what the alarms does. So. The threshold for the alarm is that there is CPU utilization higher than 30 for one data point within five minutes, right? So this takes raw um, raw metrics such as CPU utilization, and basically, depending on the, on, the, on your uh, on your setup, it raises an alarm for something. But actually, let's read an alarm, right? It would be the best way to do it. I will select a metric. Um, I will be having a look here at my uh, web servers, and we'll get to these web servers later on. Um, let me just move my face again. Um, uh, can I move this? Yes, I can. So, um, for example, let's have a CPU usage here of user, right? Um, we'll take this uh, metric, and we'll have maybe the P95, I guess, right? like that, um, and I'll select this metric. So this metric will be used, so for this instance, right, um, we will be using this metric for this instance, um, we will use a P95 statistic here over a period of five minutes. If a value of this metric, right, is, what kind of values do we have here? It's in percentage, right, so it's zero to 100%. So if the value is over, uh, well, uh, it's weird because we have a really small instance. Let's try to do something low. Let's let's try, let's try to put here like four, or three, four. So, um, and this is horrible. This is a horrible alarm. Um, and I will set that in case the CPU utilization in this instance, uh, CPU users utilization is uh, higher than four percent uh, within five minutes. Actually, let's do just one minute to be. Or is it last like 30 seconds? That'd be crazy. Um, and this is going to be charged a bit more, but uh, within 30 seconds, if there's a greater or equal uh, value than four, this alarm will be triggered. Um, I will just alarms to trigger. 
that's fine. Uh, do I send a notification? I have one here as well. I'll send a notification to myself uh, or I'll basically just send a message, right? Um, click next, give it a name, stream, ec2 cpu util. Um, what did we say? Set it to 3%, 3% cpu user. All right, so 4%, yeah. So if, if it triggers, if it passes this on the 95 percentile, we will be getting uh, 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 an alarm triggered, right? So if we have a look, there's nothing in alarm right now. It's all green. Let me actually try to con connect to this EC2 instance. I believe I have it somewhere here. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Like that. Uh, I guess I can install it stress, right? Pseudo, yeah. Um, there's no stress package. Um, how can we generate a quick load on Linux without using a stress stress tool? Mm. Uh, I can do some BD, I guess, right? Um, BD, uh, if... Dev vrand of dev no right, but there's no vrand. Um, so dev random. So this should be now causing some CPU spike. Hopefully, um, maybe we see an alarm here, right? So let me just refresh this. It takes again, uh, again. 30 minutes and you can see the okay alarms here um are set up as to be fine let's see what happens with our cp utilization on this side again i i to be fair i don't know if dd will do something like this no i'm, I'm just copying a whole lot of data uh, data random data to a uh, uh, avoid um so i'm not sure if this will work but um let me go back here refresh this Oh, there is a small spike here and something is coming up so um hopefully this this triggers something i, I don't know if it will <laughs> but in general um if even if this this demo doesn't work uh what what it should happen in 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 case this alarm is triggered if i have actually breached this for percent i actually may do this right it's coming up uh, so if i if i breach this um threshold uh, it will be red here on the left hand side, so the zero will be turning into one, and I will have an alarm triggered. Now, alarm, oh, there we go, it's, it's triggered. Ha, huh. eventual consistency. So, this is an alarm. Now, I will probably get an email saying, Hey, an alarm has been triggered, your CPU utilization is over the charts, or whatever you set it up to. Um, do something now. It, here's also a very important uh, thing I've learned over the years uh, if you have an alarm and uh, question of alarm and notifications and pages is very important. If you have an alarm, let's say I have an alarm here that states your EC2 instance has CPU utilization over X uh, for the period of whatever. Unless you have an action item or a playbook, a runbook, a something that you can do when you receive this alarm or when you receive this page, you don't need this alarm, right? So... <laughs> Again, in my previous job, we used to get I get used to get bombarded by SMS messages of "Ho, oh, your CPU is spiking at 70%. And it was just like, oh, okay, I guess, and just throw it away. And then you get numb to that. You you start ignoring your alarms. So when an alarm happens, either something should be done automatically, there should be some process that receives this alarm, because it's not only a person that can receive an alarm. Because I'm using SNS here, so it's a notification service, something else can be triggered. A Lambda function might be listening on that topic and pulls the message, re reboots the instance or, or whatever it does, right? Uh, also, if like I as an operations folks receive this message, there should also be, oh, the CP utilization is over 70%. Uh, here's your playbook. This is the steps you take when you do this. So basically every alarm should be a call to action Alarms should not be used for monitoring. That sounds weird, but it's you do not gauge 
how good your application is of how, by how many alarms you get. It's not the best way to approach it, right? So um, this thing is an alarm. Let me try to get it on alarm. So I will just stop my, my oh, 17 megabytes, right? There you go. Um, stop my DD. Um, by the way, DD is a utility that basically used for copying data or duplicating disks. So the DD actually stands for disk duplication or duplicator, but it also stands for destroyer of disks. So if you DD something over a disk, it doesn't care, it just overwrites things no matter what. So be careful when using DD. Okay, so now after a while, um, this should actually you know get out of alarm. So um, I will not be focusing on this one as of now. So these are alarms, right? So um, yes, uh, Graham says, we're good tip, we do email alarms and you're right about becoming numb to them. Absolutely. So alarms for the sake of alarms are, I wouldn't say useless, but they make, they get worse as the time goes by because you just get numb to them. You ignore them. You're like, oh, okay, that's just my, my monitoring server just pinging me something has happened. If you would have like proper alarming in place and you get alarmed only when you should, uh, then you basically will freak out when you get a message, oh, something has actually happened and I have to do something. So everything, every time you get a, an alarm, you should do something or there should be a, a step you take when you get it like a car exactly there you go so nobody cares about car alarms and when i was a kid uh 20 odd years ago uh like there was one caller car alarm in my entire neighborhood and it, when it would go off wow, <laughs> the entire street would just oh what happened right now when a car alarm goes car alarms goes off it's just oh eh, that's just fine right nobody cares so how effective are car alarms all car alarms today nobody knows Okay, uh, so those are alarms. So those are metric alarms. But uh, uh, besides just metric alarms, there are also things called composite alarms. So, um, what are composite alarms? So, um, let me just do something here as well. Let me create a metric, another one. I'll just use the same thing here. Um, uh, use CPU, I think this is memory. Move my face yeah, like this. Um, what number here is here? Seventy percent. Okay. Um, okay. I'll put greater than let's say fifteen percent. Fifteen, right? Should be okay. Um, I'll set a period for thirty seconds again. Again, these periods also should be very much. You should take care when you're setting up these periods what's good for you and what's not. So you have to understand that. 30 seconds may be good, or it may be an overkill as well. So you don't want to pay for more things that you that you have to. Um, click the next. Again, I'll send myself an email. Uh, stream uh, user and alarm. Uh, was it 15%? So now I created, I'll create these things here. Um, almost like to trigger this alarm as well but let me actually modify this a bit more back maybe not 15 maybe 15 isn't good a thing let's try to do 18. um next next why did i say 12. does my <laughs> does my keyboard not work okay because i entered this twice now 18. okay 18. So when I create, multi I'm creating a multi multiple multiple uh, alarms here, right? So I have an alarm for for uh, for uh, CPU utilization, and I have an alarm for um, uh, memory usage, right? So <clears throat> one of the things you can do here, if you select two of these things, you can create a composite alarm. So a composite alarm is basically a, a combination of one or two, one or more metric alarm or two or more metric alarms that um, can basically will trigger a bigger alarm, you know, because um, sometimes when you have an EC2 instance, for example, it's a server and you have a steep utilization spike, it could be something, it could be a, a something processing in the back end. Uh, it can be maybe a customer submitted some data, which is potentially a bit more, requ requires a bit more oomph. Um, uh, or similar to that. Like it could be a one-off thing. It can be something intrinsic. 
But when you make a composite alarm, you combine more things such as memory, network throughput, disk utilization. Uh, you can actually uh, get a big alarm, right? You create this big old alarm um, that, um, so I can do, uh, basically create this and you do and, right? Yeah. So I want, I will create this alarm if, and only if both of these alarms are triggered, right? So this composite alarm, so stream, stream composite. Uh, that's fine. So if both of these things are in an alarm state, maybe I can do that. Um, so I do PD again. If both of these um, alarms are in, in an alarm state, then the composite alarm will also trigger. So um, it's it's a bit different, right? They're, they're, they're basically used to kind of reduce noise. So we've been talking about a lot of alarms and pings and those things. And one of the other ways you can reduce noise of, of getting pinged constantly is creating a uh, creating a, um, a composite alarm, right? something that will be triggered only if a certain subset of alarms of, let's say I use 20 alarms here, right? And if only uh, like a, a certain number or a certain combination of those alarms is triggered, then you should really notify me that something has been actually happening. So that's a great thing. Um, also, one key difference between metric alarms and composite alarms, uh, if you ever used an auto scaling group, if you ever used an ASG to deploy servers or, you know, an ECS, like a ECS cluster, those use uh, uh, metric alarms, right? So auto scaling up and down uses metric alarms. Composite alarms cannot be used in such uh, use cases, so they cannot be used to like, um, trigger trigger like uh, uh, specific api actions directly like the through uh, auto scaling uh and that. but you can uh trigger a notification to do something else so technically you can do it if you can trigger all and the function you can do whatever you want so yeah uh that's a composite alarm now if, uh, when i'm gonna trigger it i have no idea maybe i did so the cpualization is in alarm um let me just do this stream so See, because this one is alarm, the composite one is not yet in alarm. The memory one might spike or might not. Um, yeah, but the DD thing should not deeply eat all the memory of it. So I might not be able to trigger this alarm. But yeah, basically if, if the memory alarm would be triggered as well, the composite alarm would be also triggered. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a, 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 a neat way to do it. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, Graham, yeah, it's a really useful thing again. Reducing noise is very important. Um, let's move on to something else. Um, uh, there's another uh, useful thing about CloudWatch and it's logs. And logs is also a separate part of CloudWatch. If you have a look at the documentation, logs will be its own little um, area uh, where you have to look. So logs is kind of the same, but, but separate. So a lot of services also publish logs and CloudWatch logs is, well, um, it gives you the ability to store, monitor, access log files from your EC2 instances, from your uh, cloud trails, route 53, Lambda functions, whatever makes logs, you're able to use CloudWatch logs for such a thing. And 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 this is also important. So especially when we're, when we're talking about, um, so let me just do a stream. Uh, can I do this? Yeah. So especially if we're doing something like, um, like a web server, right? So something running on an EC2 instance. Uh, log collection is extremely important. So, you know, logs are never needed unless they are. And when they are, they're really needed. So make sure if you're gonna collect logs, yeah, the new, yeah, second, it looks better, absolutely. So yeah, the previous one was not the best thing. I think I think I can switch to the original one still. Uh, yeah, it's, this thing is just, well. So yeah, it's much easier to do it now within the new interface, so. I'm very happy to see that we are kind of bringing up all the all the new features uh, uh, back, or, or all the new services, all the existing services to to the new 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 uh, new theme or uh, visual style uh, stream. So, when having logs again, logs are not important unless you need them, and <laughs> well, when you need them, it's it's maybe too late. So, um, logs itself, you have to choose what you need to log. Right, uh, you don't log everything. May, unless you have a requirement to do so, uh, log the things that would make sense. You know? So CloudWatch Logs gives you the ability to basically stream logs. So if you have a, a let's say a system that runs EC2 instances, 
and your troubleshooting starts by having to check the logs on an EC2 instance, that is most likely a developer environment. Because in production, if you're gonna do troubleshooting on an EC2 instance by logging in and checking the logs there, there's potentially some things you can do, be doing better, right? So uh, shipping logs off virtual machines, off EC2 instances to somewhere else is key to having a, a let's say, a, a good time when you have to troubleshoot a problem. Uh, so it doesn't have to be CloudWatch, but in CloudWatch, uh, CloudWatch logs basically gives you the, um, the, makes a centralized store of logs. And CloudWatch serves as this um, also, when you have a proper, uh, I'm not sure, I've never talked about this, but uh, I might do a stream on this as well, like uh, proper organization of uh, AWS accounts. Because a lot of people who use AWS just have a single account, right? But the more serious you get, the more accounts you start using. So one of the accounts that people use within AWS when they have a multi-account strategy is, uh, let's say, a, a logging account. So an account where all the logs are being funneled from all the different sides. Uh, you know, you have a you have you know your your production accounts, developer accounts, staging, whatnots, right? Security accounts, all the things, and all the logs are being funneled into this big old centralized log account. So, CloudWatch Logs is this great little tool uh, that can help you basically in storing logs from different sides, uh, viewing them. Right, I can have a look at my logs here. Like this is my Apache logs, so I can have a look here and you know maybe search through them, filter something. Um, We'll have a look at cloud, cloud log insights um, once we get to them, uh, but that's one great way to to, to check out uh, things as well. So, um, so CloudWatch logs, yeah, um, it's a service that everybody needs to use, but not everybody does. So, and, um, and that actually brings me to my point is that I will be trying in the next twenty minutes to actually set this up. So uh, I will spin up. Let's spin up an EC2 instance. Uh, let's set up a web server on it, um, and let's have a look at some logs right so i'll just launch an ec2 instance here launch an instance rim says our company has 20 odd accounts we have a master for billing but other than that they are separate yeah absolutely um th that's also good right even if the accounts are separate they do separate things you can always have one centralized logging account because um it's great for troubleshooting it's also great for uh, investigation if something goes bad you know you actually understand in this one uh, logging account where you can actually access all the things from a central place. So let me create an EC2 instance in one of my VPCs. Uh, now, one of the things, what, what we're gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna be installing CloudWatch agent and I'm gonna be shipping my Apache logs from uh, this instance to CloudWatch with all the bells and whistles, right? So one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm adding an IAM role, uh, basically a, a permission set to my EC2 instance to allow my instance in itself to communicate with CloudWatch. So this can, CloudWatch can also be used on premises. So if you have your data center or your Raspberry Pi or your laptop, you can also use the same with it. The only difference is you cannot attach an IAM role. You need to just set up credentials locally. Um, yeah, so Graham asked how we do that. Yeah, you would need cross account IAM roles for this. Absolutely. So your instances in one account have to have permission to write to CloudWatch in a different account, which is perfectly fine. And if you use things such as Control Tower or Landing Zone, it sets it up for you. So uh, that's a great a great thing to check out as well. So I'm adding a permission, uh, a role here to my EC2 instance that can that allows my instance to basically write to CloudWatch. Uh, give some storage to it. Oh, that 35 gigs. See, something... Ah... This is new. I didn't know you can scroll within this one. Is this something? Huh. Is this an update to Chrome or, or something? Because I have not seen that before. Um, give it a tag, something, something, name, web server, stream. Uh, configure a security group. I have my own here that I'm using. This one should be fine launch um, free tier I'm, I'm way beyond free tier uh, select the key knowledge launch okay so I just need to give it a moment for this instance to launch and then I will be connecting to it so I'll be I have, I have it already prepared but I just want to show you the process of it because 
it's it's a bit you know if, especially if you're doing it manually it's a bit weird um there's a few things you need to do before it works so i, I want to share this experience with you because um uh, it's not i mean you could follow the documentation but hey you want to follow a bald guy so that would be better right um actually let me open up my new session here <clears throat> fish so like that and let me just go and change Okay, so first thing I need to do is blah, 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 sudo yum update. I need to install H Apache, right? So, okay. Um, install HTTPD, right? Cool. Graham asks, is there much a difference between landing zone and or control tower? Uh, yeah, so... Um, uh, landing zone is a solution, control tower is a service. Uh, landing zone is basically a hodgepodge of a multiple different services and things that kind of enable you to create this landing zone or multi-account structure with all the bells and whistles. Uh, and it's very, it is very uh, much more, let's say, customizable. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. It requires you to do a lot of cloud formation and packer and a whole lot of different uh, stuff. So you need to uh, put a lot more effort into it. While Control Tower is just a, a push button solution that is very opinionated. So it gives you a, a an opinionated way of how you should deploy your services. Um, but it's much, much easier to do than Landing Zone. So again, two of them exist. Landing Zones came before Control Tower. Um, but both of them are useful in their own use case. So, uh, sudo, so let me just do things as root, right? Sudo su, uh, system, ctl, uh, httpd, start, oops, start httpd. Cool, curl, localhost. I think there's a website running here. So if I would be doing this, um, yeah, there's a website running here. Awesome. Uh, so uh, one of the things we need to do right now is we need to install CloudWatch agent. So how do you do that? Um, well, actually, I have a whole bunch of commands that I need to run. So let me just do this. So first of all, you need to download the RPM. So uh, beyond install doesn't work too. There's an RPM you need to pull. So I have a, I pasted just a wget URL of an RPM and this, this URL is available on the documentation. So then I have to install it with uh, RPM, is it RPM? Yeah. U and then this, yeah. So um, I've just now installed this one. So once this is done, um, you need to set up, there's a there's two ways of configuring. So there's a big old configuration file with, written in JSON, which you can just write yourself, uh, or even bet, better yet, keep it on, on a systems manager parameter store, and then just apply it here. Or you can use a, a wizard that kind of does this for you. So I will be using the wizard just to show you all. I'll just move my face uh, like that. So see here, it asks you, which OS are you planning to use the agent? Linux, number one. Is it on EC2 or on-prem? EC2. Uh, which user are you planning to run the agent? Now, if you are just going to collect metrics, such as, you know, serialization, memory, disk stuff, blah, 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 CW agent is fine. But if you're gonna collect logs, like I'm gonna collect logs from um, Apache, root is super easy to set up because root has access to that. Uh, if you use CW agent or some other user, make sure to have that user have permissions to those logs um, uh, if, if, if you want them to be shipped. If, if, you, if I use CW agent right now and do not do anything with permissions, there will be no logs in CloudWatch logs, right? So uh, I will be using, look at me as well. So I will be using root here, that's fine. Do you want to use statsd daemon? No. Uh, so you can collect data from statsd as well. I'm not gonna be doing that. You can collect data from collectd as well, right? You can monitor metrics basically from there. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I wanna monitor host metrics, CPU memory, absolutely. Um, do you wanna monitor super yes, per core? So I wanna do a bit more fine-grained monitoring. So yes, I want to do per core. Uh, do you want to see a CD message? Yeah, I want to. I want to just get all this information within my metrics. Yep. Uh, now, the what is the resolution of my collection? The default is like one minute, but I'm gonna be you know go, go wild in here and select uh, ten seconds. Um, which default metrics do you want to configure? I'm I want to do all. I want to just select advanced, so it's gonna do a whole bunch of things. And if in the, within the documentation, there's a nice list of what of the, what what each of these means, right? What what exactly does it collect? 
Uh, are you satisfied with the config above? Uh, I, yes, I am, I guess. But I want to add some log files. So uh, do you want to have an existing clockwise log change? I don't have any um, agent. I don't want to do migrations. But I want to monitor log files. So where's my log file? It is in var log dub 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 access. So this is going to be my Apache access log. I'm going to name them as um, stream um, Apache access. So this is going to be the log group name. So this is what's going to show up on college logs. The default choice, the stream name, because within a log group, you can have multiple streams. And I'm just going to leave the instance ID so that I know from which instance these logs are coming from. That's fine. Um, I want to add more. I want to do var uh, log uh, dub 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 error. All right. So I want to collect error logs as well. Well, bad. Um, a log group name, I'll do stream Apache error. Uh, that's all fine. Do you want to specify? I don't want to do anything more. So I'm, I specify just two log files locally, which I want to ship to CloudWatch. I don't want more. Uh, do you want to store the config in SSM parameter store? Now, I could say yes here to store this current configuration within parameter store, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have permissions to write to parameter store right now. So I'm just saying no. And well, bam. So uh, Graham says, does it generate uh, the JSON file after? Your Absolutely does. And don't be sorry for your questions. This is a stream and this is what it's for, right? So I, I expect you all to ask the questions. So feel free. And yes, actually it does. So if you he see here, this is the location of a JSON file, um, which is going to be having all the, all the uh, configuration. So if I do Vim and this, you can see it all being there as well. So one of the things I want to just add here, uh, I don't know what I want to use fame. I want colors. Thin. There we go. So I want to add something here. So one of the things I want to do is add a, me uh, a metric or a namespace to my metrics. Because here's the thing. Uh, let me show you this. So if I go to CloudWatch and I go to metrics, um, you can see these namespaces. So the namespaces, you know, the standard ones coming from AWS resources, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but there's also custom namespaces. The CW agent is the default namespace name for all CloudWatch agents. Uh, and I want to change it something. So my example I did before, I changed it to stream web servers um, before, so it would just show up here separately for this instance uh, right now. So I will just add a, a namespace here, namespace, and just call it stream Apache. Cool. Not my fame. <laughs> um, awesome. So I've just saved this file and I'm ready to go. So once I have this, I can, I can start uh, CloudWatch agent and basically start it with this um, uh, a log file. But before I do that, I want to, I want to make some changes here. Um, so uh, Apache by default stores logs in a, in a in a in a different format. So it stores logs in a it doesn't tag the, the data it's 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 send, it's sending over. So one of the things I'm gonna be changing now is I'm gonna be changing the log format for uh, CloudWatch so that I can basically use it um, uh, better with with um, with uh, with Cloud, uh, sorry I'm gonna be changing the log format of Apache so I can use it better with CloudWatch. So what I what I have to do here is vim etc httpd conf and uh, conf and then httpd conf yes so there is log somewhere all right all right so I want to do this I want to paste in this line here I want to do my error logs to be of a specific format um, that's fine. Get not my bin, and I want to do also this. But I'm I'm defining a specific log format here that's gonna basically output things in a different way. So I want more details in my logging as well on on, on Apache as well. So uh, let me just copy paste this, and I'm just gonna do that and change this to CloudWatch. Awesome. 
So uh, system CTL HTTP oh, reload, reload HTTP we fine? Yeah, okay. Curl. Let me see if the website works. Uh, that works, okay. I have not broken anything. Uh, now that I have this, this logging set up, oh, uh, one thing I need to do as well is mkdir. I'm missing those log directories, so it might complain. var log, uh, dub, dub, dub. then access, access, right? And error. So I just created these two directories that I've defined within my uh, CloudWatch um, 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 no, 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 CloudWatch log setup. All right, uh, again, let me just reload this just, just to be safe. And if I go to LSLR log, blah, 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 and then access, I don't have anything yet, but at some point I should. Mm. In any case, it, the log file should be piling up there as well. So to, to get those log, to get basically the, to get the configuration I've created uh, to CloudWatch, I need to run this uh, big command here. So I need to basically run the CloudWatch agent CTL or the command line uh, to, tool uh, and fetch the config, basically import the config into it. So I'm using fetch config here um, to, to get this thing here. So just do that. So it's basically read the configuration file. I've told it told it from that uh, location, right? Uh, the, the, the JSON file I've created. Um, it has restarted the CloudWatch uh, service. And yeah, we should be fine. If I will be running this, now this is the CTL command. If I do, uh, if I do a status, I can see that the CloudWatch agent is running. Or the, yeah. So, with any luck now, uh, if I go back to my CloudWatch uh, page, I should be able to see something happening. Uh, just put the screen completely. So we're waiting for this thing to come up here. So we're waiting for the for the metrics to show up here. There should be another custom namespace here as well. So logs, um, things might not show up yet, right? Um, but, the metrics are not available at this moment. So we're just waiting for this, for these things to show up here. So that would be basically the process how you would install these things. But um, uh, instead of me just, you know, waiting for this, I have it already prepared. This I just did it before I, I started today. So um, it should be it should be ready. We can play around with those things. So I I did the same thing for for do a different web server actually running a different website. So I have a super awesome website here, right? So um, I have some you know links doesn't matter. I have a secret page as well. So there's a secret page. So um, I I basically uh, I, I I created this before and I'm I, I'm again gonna get gonna do something now with it, right? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a look at some logs. So if I go to log groups and have a look at uh, stream, right? So there's the HTTP access um, uh, Lambda or a log directory that I've, I had before. It's basically the same thing as I had uh, as a setup for this right now. Um, this is where I can have all my logs, all the people who have requested there, anything, all the requests. Basically, it's an access log from 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 Apache, right? Nothing special. But again, it's something. It's easy to search through here. Sometimes you can filter things. It can be great. But we can do a bit more. We can do something called uh, logs, log insights. Uh, Graham asks, I guess you can store the RPM file in S3 and install it to Lambda or System Manager. Actually, there's a way to do it with System Manager. I just wanted to do it manually because, you know, it's it's cool. But you can do, uh, uh, there's a Systems Manager um, distributor. So if you go here to distributor and have a look at CloudWatch agent, I can just select this and uh, install one time and then basically pick an instance to install it to. So I can do it through, through Systems Manager. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but again, I wanted to show you how you actually configure the file locally. And then if you use Systems Manager, you can actually store this file on the configuration on Systems SSM Parameter Store and then use that in, inside of your, um, inside of your um, uh, CloudWatch agent. So yeah, super easy, absolutely. Uh, so back to this. 
So Cloudflare Log Insights gives you the ability to uh, basically get insights or uh, get more useful information from your logs, right? So if I select uh, my log file here and I can do, it uses a, a custom query language, right? So it, it has a kind of a query language similar to SQL. Uh, it's, a, it's a query language, right? And you can do a lot of different things. You can kind of uh, query, sort, limit, whatever. You can kind of visualize your, your log files. So if I run query here, um, basically it's getting me uh, the, the the latest 20 um, entries into my log file, right? It, just getting me a timestamp, um, a message, and that's it. So not very useful in this case, um, but uh, we can do a bit more with it. Uh, as you can see, the, 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 the current fields is timestamp and message. And those are the things that come with the log. So that's how CloudWatch logs reads them. It basically gets a, a message from CloudWatch coming in itself and reads this thing and, and dumps it out. But Insights is a bit smart. If you have a look at uh, queries here, on the, uh, sorry, and fields, it actually has detected something more. So you can see the file name, you can see the host, you can see the method. So it, it was it's able to parse this information from here. And that's the whole reason why I changed the logging within Apache. So these things could be shown here as well, right? So now with these things, we can do something a lot more. For example, I've shown you this, um, uh, the secret page, right? So let's think maybe this is an administration console, right? Maybe this is something uh, that's hidden or it's not hidden. It's something that we block or uh, an admin panel or something, whatever, right? We can get basically using CloudWatch, we can get how much, how much people requested or try to access that page. So by running a, 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 a a query something like this, right? So basically it's worth telling it, hey, give me a timestamp, give me the remote IP, uh, give me the request, the status, the file name, uh, store, sort based on the timestamp, but please filter when the file name is var www secret HTML. And the file name is C here, you see it here. So if I run query, uh, it will show me um, all the, the queries to the secret page within the, well, um, the last, whatever, right? As long as I have the logs. <laughs> so well, within the last hour. So if I do 12 hours, which will extend it a bit more, if I query this again, um, I will get a bit more. I'll get at least 20. So I'll see which IP addresses tried to access the secret HTML file. And also you get this, um, while super simple, you get a small, like a graph to see when these things occurred or not. So pretty cool. Um, how useful it is. Uh, again, there are some better tools out there, don't get me wrong. There are some more powerful tools uh, coming from our partners such as Datadog and New Relic and a whole lot of things, but this is a great thing to kind of visualize some things. Or for example, I wanted to get just a raw number of how many uh, how many uh, visits I have to my vets website from uh, unique addresses. So I want to get uh, the 200, oh, well, but I need some fields as well. Wait, I, have, I can need to paste this as well. Um, how many unique uh, visits I get. So I will just get a small list here that says I had 16 unique visitors within the last 12 hours um, on my website. So pretty cool. Again, it's not, I mean, most people use this. Um, you might not use this just purely for Apache. If you have a look here at queries, uh, you will see that there's a whole lot of sample queries to get like uh, latency statistics for lambdas, maybe do some cloud trail things, you know, log entries by specific service, uh, you know, do some route, route 53 um, thing. So uh, logs for different AWS services are quite well supported by this. Oh, wow, an hour already gone. Jesus, this is a... <laughs> These streams are super fun, I must say. So, um, yeah, these would be basically the logs. Now, one more thing I want to show, and then I will be letting you all have the rest of your uh, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, well, Tuesday, uh, uh, get your Tuesday back, is the dashboards. So the dashboards are basically what what, this, what it says on the 10. Uh, so the dashboards are, are a place where you can create a dashboard. You can add different uh, graphs, metrics, things on him. Now, it's not all super fancy and bells and whistles uh, as some other services, but uh, to get a simple dashboard, 
Like for example, this is a dashboard for my uh, for my web servers where I show my capitalization for the users. Uh, I show a percentage of my memory usage, my current disk usage in percent, and for example, the attempts to the secret page and the general access logs as well. So I show them all up here. And, and the way you add these things, you just basically choose a, choose a widget, right? I want a line metric. I want to select it like that. I will pick one of the, oh, the metric showed up, right? Uh, I will pick to one of these things, you know, um, let me just move it up. Uh, yeah, like my temporary storage on whatever, right? Uh, the, uh, the MPFS, right? So like that, I'll select that, create a widget, and that's it, right? I can do some, I can make some changes here, you know, what kind of averages do I want, or some graph options, maybe how it looks, you know, some, some labeling, uh, and I can just add it to this dashboard. And this dashboard, um, basically, you save it, um, and it's, you can enter like the full screen as well to show it properly. So if you if you show this like on a on a monitor in, in your in your office, it's it's uh, it's easier to view this way. Um, yeah. So that was a basic look at CloudWatch. So we talked about what is CloudWatch, why is monitoring important, why are alarms important, how you should do monitor, what you do monitor. Again, a whole I can spend an hour just talking about why and how you should do monitoring. Uh, we 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 seen what alarms are, what metrics are, what are uh, logs. How do you do logs? How do you install a CloudWatch agent to collect Apache logs from an EC2 instance, push them to a log group, uh, to a log group, and then having log insights parse it with some query language from uh, Apache uh, from CloudWatch logs insights. Uh, there's other things like this. This thing I really want to cover the synthetics. This is a new feature. Uh, basically, it helps you um, monitor applications with lightweight canary tests. So this is super new, and I don't have enough information on this to kind of go through it. But on uh, uh, one of my next streams, I'm gonna actually try to do this a bit more because when you do like when we talk about DevOps and pipelines and testing and deployments, canary tests are super important. So uh, having synthetics here is 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 a great thing to uh, to start with. Now again. I have no idea how this works right now, so I need to I need to dig into a bit. Yeah, so um, yeah, that would be it. That would be my part of uh, of getting started or taking a look at CloudWatch. Again, all of my taking a look at Asterix uh, series is basically just having a, a ten thousand foot overview of what these things are. It's not anything deep into any into any specific part of the service. We had a look at a few things, uh, but um, we we can do about a lot more. So. This will be CloudWatch. I hope to do a bit more specific things on CloudWatch, something more advanced. Um, coming up this week uh, on Thursday, I will be doing something with Systems Manager. So we will be going through a lot of things on Systems Manager, which covers patch management, session manager, distributor, parameter store, all of the fun tools you can use. Um, so this Thursday, that's coming up. Um, so that would be it, yeah. So once again, thank you all very much for uh, attending here. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope you all have a great rest of the week as well. And yeah, um, please reach out to me if you have any any questions or if you are missing any links that I sent today, I'm available on all the social medias and Twitch and whatnot. So uh, once again, thank you very much. I wish you a really nice rest of the day and uh, rest of the week and see you Thursday. Bye-bye.